Are we live? Are we live? Mazda CX-60, their large vehicle platform should be debuting here in just, oh, 12 minutes or so. Uh, I'm excited. Plug-in hybrids. Um, yeah, you know, before I get too far into it, there was a leak yesterday. That's why I uh, have been pretty quiet about it. Um, I didn't want to present the information with some like crappy screenshots. Like I want to have the full fat information here from Mazda. And I do have a press release, which I, I don't want to talk about until 11 minutes from now. And I don't know what Mazda is going to show us. So um, I'm going to show you what I have. All I know is that at their banner at the top of their YouTube page in Europe, it says today 5 p.m., which is 11 a.m. my time, Eastern time, the all-new Mazda CX-60 plug-in hybrid crafted in Japan. All of them will be built in Japan, of course, but hopefully when I refresh this page at the top of the hour, we'll have maybe uh, some some really nice video that we can watch together for the first time. Um, I have just a couple images that were already leaked, but I want to have more more information, at least when it comes to the looks, uh, the design, interior, and exterior. Uh, like I said, I have uh, this press release here, which I'm not going to talk about until later on. But I'm going to see what you guys are saying in the comments. And we're just going to have fun with this. Uh, rear wheel drive, but all wheel drive standard. Keep that in mind. Uh, as we know, all uh, crossovers from Mazda going forward will have all wheel drive. Um, there should be a new transmission. Uh, we know inline sixes, uh, diesel gasoline. We also know plug-in hybrid. Um, so I'm going to check out what you guys are saying in the comments. Sykes of Pop says, good morning, buenos dias. Absolutely. Um, when will the Mazda 6 come to life? God willing, Mazda will bring us a replacement for the Mazda 6. Um, if you don't know, it has been canceled. Uh, so it's unfortunate because it was such a great car. Uh, it drove great for a large sedan, uh, had a excellent interiors, good exterior design that held up well, even though it was pretty aged by the time they canceled it. So yeah, if they can bring this new platform to the Mazda 6 or the replacement for the Mazda 6, that would be ideal. Um, <laughs> what about Mazda fully electric EV says... Uh, Nade J JZZ. Uh, we don't know much. I mean, we, we have the MX-30. That's all you need, right? All you need is 100 miles of range. So, uh, no, we don't know anything about it other than they're they're taking, they're like Toyota. They're taking a multi-prong approach to uh, carbon neutrality, if that's even possible. Um, Mazda can never, okay, Elmo saying Mazda can never rival luxury brands unless it has a luxury brand like Amadi because people always associate Mazda as the same company that makes a Mazda 3 or in Europe the Mazda 2. Yeah, so Mazda Mazda's doing something weird here. They have two lineups. They're going to have their mainstream lineup for commoners and then they'll have their large body uh, lineup which the CX-60 is the first vehicle. They'll also be the CX-70 that we get here in the United States. It's supposed to be a little bit wider. But they essentially have two lineups under one badge uh, for mainstream and one for luxury. So it's it's fun It's fun to see how, how successful they're going to be with charging premium slash luxury prices for their large body vehicles. I mean, time will tell to see how successful they are, but I, I'm... Very confident in Mazda's ability to make fun to drive vehicles. Also, very nice interior and exteriorly designed vehicles. So, I think Mazda has a great, great chance on the luxury market. Um, but are they, you know, by not offering battery electric vehicles at this point, are they a little behind the curve? I don't know. I, I literally just got done finishing a video talking about how the war uh, in Ukraine is jacking the prices up for raw materials, especially nickel, aluminum, iron, 
palladium, etc. So battery prices are not going to be getting any cheaper anytime soon. Car prices in general are going to continue to rise and it's a complete mess. So definitely stay tuned because I'll, I'll have that video probably up um, tomorrow or something. It's very, very interesting to think about and, and to see what's going on. And it's unfortunate for the consumer at this point. All right, how we looking? We got about seven minutes left. Mazda service and dealers need to step it up. They are appalling. I agree. So that's the thing. When you're starting to charge sixty, seventy thousand dollars, that's my guess for these the these large platform vehicles, you need to have luxury customer service. There's no other way to do it. Um, that's why you know even even though Genesis is growing. There's still just a tiny, tiny droplet than what like Lexus was just a few years into the luxury uh, endeavor. Um, and a part of that is Lexus had like dozens and dozens of standalone dealers before they even knew what kind of car they were getting. <laughs> so uh, the, the it, Genesis is just kind of using the success of the Hyundai dealerships. But again, you you can't. It's really, really hard, and and Mazda will, might find this out. It's really, really hard to offer mainstream products and mainstream dealer customer service and customer care, uh, and try to offer that alongside luxury customer care underneath the same roof. There's a reason why hardly anyone else is doing it. So it'll be interesting to see how Mazda can change their culture throughout not only the United States but the world to to provide uh, excellent customer service from the bargain based basement Mazda 2 to the $70,000, that's, I guess, $70,000 CX-90. So will the configurator be, be, configurator be available today? I sure hope so. That would be amazing. We could have some fun with that. <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to get price today, I don't expect. Um, I don't even know if we're going to get a review, like a, a release window. Um, it should be out by the end of the year, though, in Europe. And CX-70 might be announced by the end of the year. It may be available early 2023, mid-2023. It's really hard to say. Mazda's been really under wraps about <clears throat> the uh, their large platform. Uh, giving us teasers along the, along the way. We've known about this inline six rear-wheel drive base platform for a long time. But other than that, it's been it's been crickets. Dan, Dan says, I hope the CX-90 won't be 70K. Uh, hey, it's going to be going against the GV80. It's going to be going against the Acura MDX Type S in some ways. So I think I think they're going to be charged. I mean, if you look at the CX-9, gosh, I just reviewed a CX-9. I think it was like around 50,000. I mean, I don't I don't see how the CX-90 could come in much under 60k maybe for entry level and then you know you, you can option it up to around 70 that's what i'm i'm expecting with how out of control pricing is at this point do i think the two and a half liter hybrid system will ever make it down to the mazda 3 uh, uh do you mean the plug-in hybrid mark like that we're gonna see in this setup no because that's it's only for the the large platform rear wheel drive based vehicles um but if you're saying the two and a half liter hybrid that we're going to see in the CX-50 based off a Toyota uh, system that's not going to be in the Mazda 3, I don't think. I think they mild hybrid the Mazda 3 um, before they give it an actual hybrid, but who knows? It's really hard to say. Ma Mazda is, I love making Mazda videos because, like I said, they like teasing us, and then I can speculate a lot. I get those, those creative crazy juices flowing. But um, let's see here. Kirk... Things like the K900 Singer are built by normal brands that people don't buy them. <laughs> yeah, but they're also huge sedans. Uh, and sedan, well, the K900, I should say. K900 Cadenza, big sedans, no one buys that. Stinger. Uh, people associate Kia more so with a cheap brand than Mazda. That is for damn sure. Um, which I have a Kia. I have a Kia video coming out. I filmed it last night. I think it'll be up tomorrow morning, uh, talking about how Kia is in, and Hyundai for that matter, but mainly Kia is going to be bringing the EV uh, EV9 to the market, three row fully battery electric 
coming next year, as well as tons of other electric news from the Koreans. So, uh, yeah, Kia is definitely going more and more upscale. Um, and that's why not only are they continuing to grow, but they're becoming more and more profitable as they, they're selling higher ticket items. So that's why Mazda, Mazda wants to sell more expensive vehicles uh, because you can make more money. They know that growing the brand volume wise probably isn't isn't going to happen a whole lot. Uh, they've probably reached that cap that they are growing a little bit here in the United States, but I think they would rather make more money per car than trying extra hard to sell more product. So crypto pimp, you're the man. That's all I can say. Hoping for an eight speed, you're going to get an eight speed and it's going to be excellent. Um, two minutes left. Let's refresh. Let's see if they jump the gun at all. Uh, it doesn't look like it. I also have their media pages up. This is the UK page, which you would think the UK page would be one of the first ones um, to have that that new new the new news of the CX60. I also have the Mazda newsroom up. Uh, I think this might be global. It's hard to say. It says it's in English. Obviously, it's in English. But yes, I'm just I'm just waiting here, waiting patiently. Hopefully, this is a good precursor to the CX90. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. It is a good precursor because same platform. Same, you're going to have similar interior designs, similar, it's hard to say exterior designs though, because the CX-50 is specifically for America and that looks a little bit more rugged, a little more aggressive. And I think that the CX-70 and the CX-90 could be a little bit more ag aggressive and then, than the more elegant CX-60 and 80 vehicles for, for Europe. Um, but I don't even know what tangent I just got off on. So I need to get back to the comments. Are you going to the reveal of the ID Buzz since I reviewed the Jetta? You know what? I would absolutely love to have an ID Buzz either for review or, or go to the press event. I don't have any relations with uh, Volkswagen Media. Um, but I would absolutely like you guys know I'm like I could just have a separate channel for minivans or work vans like I Vans are, are maybe the most exciting vehicle for me, especially with me having four children. Um, yeah, <laughs> so don't even get me started on the, on, on the ID buzz. I did see new pictures for it. It uh, looks like it's 11 o'clock, so I'm going to refresh. Um, so I don't see anything here yet on, on the YouTube page. But since it's 11 o'clock, I can talk, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what's going on here because um, I do have a press release. But real quick, let's go over to the pictures um, of what we have of the CX. CX60. Uh, let me make sure you guys can see this. Yes, you can see it. So we have exactly what we were expecting. This vehicle, front, a front engine, rear wheel drive, but all wheel drive standard. So most of the power will be sent to the rear wheels. Um, we have a new eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. I was not expecting dual clutch, but they've gotten rid of, rid of the torque converter. Um, so that's pretty next level uh, for Mazda. We also have, oh, I don't even have the spreadsheet up. Hold on, let me pull up the spreadsheet. We also have power figures on uh, the MX, sorry, the MX, sorry, the, the CX-60. Um, for the, for the plug-in hybrid, we don't have numbers on the Skyactiv X inline six or the diesel inline six. Uh, so real quick, 323 horsepower. Whoops. I just messed that up. There we go. 323 horsepower. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys from the plug-in hybrid. So many of you guys were saying, um, oh, you know, they're just going to use the Toyota, a uh, RAV4 Prime's plug-in, but no, guys, that's a front-wheel drive, horizontally-based engine setup with electric motor in the rear. This is totally different. This is mated to an eight-speed dual clutch, uh, two and a half liter Skyactiv G with a hundred kilowatt motor, electric motor between the transmission and the engine, uh, which is about 135 horsepower or so. And we got 368 pound-feet of torque. It can also tow like 5,500 pounds, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, we should be getting 37 miles of range, but that is probably on the European cycle. So maybe 32 
when you convert it to EPA. The battery is just under 18 kilowatt hours. The RAV4 Prime is just over 18 kilowatt hours. So that seems to be the sweet spot for the Japanese plug-in hybrid SUVs right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I can get back to the image here. Let me, let me see if I can refresh because I believe it's, uh, here we go. Hello everyone. Let's watch this. My name is Martijn ten Brink and I'm the CEO. I'm the CEO of Mazda in Europe. Today was meant to be a celebration of the launch of our new car, but we've canceled that plan. We <gasps> recognize what? that a live world premiere event for a new car has no place in our agendas when people are suffering in wartime. However, in response to the very positive advance registrations for the event, we are releasing this short film about the car that you can watch if you wish. Our thoughts are with those suffering at this time and we join all the voices around the world that are asking for peace. Thank you very much. I did not see that coming. Holy cow, I did not see that coming. Um, we don't need to listen to uh, the probably copyright and fringe music. So um, with that being said, I really don't, at, at this point, I don't feel that comfortable talking about it since Mazda hasn't shared the information. They should have taken down that banner on their YouTube page talking about the reveal, um, right? All new Mazda CX plug-in hybrid. So I thought I would have been okay. Let's see if other publications are sharing this information. Um, I mean, oh, this information is has been by CarBuzz and CarScoop, so I guess I, I don't feel comfortable talking about it anymore. Um, so I'll talk to you guys in the comments and answer your questions in the comments um, about the CX-60, but I'm not gonna talk about the huge press release document that I have um, and it would be to be honest it'd be a bit boring <laughs> so I can talk about what I've already spoken about with the um, plug-in hybrid these are my estimations for the inline six and the inline six turbo which has not been announced I don't think guys I don't think we're going to get inline six turbo at this point this is my wishful thinking uh, in the past year <clears throat> or two as I made the spreadsheet um, they also have patents for twin charging Again, don't think it's going to happen. An inline six diesel uh, sky active, but it's a 3.3 liter, I believe. So that has changed, which is going to change these numbers. So maybe 280 horse and I don't know, 475 pound feet of torque. That's just a total guess. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the comments. Did not see that coming. Um, I told you the specs from what I know. I'm not going to tell you too much, too much more. Uh, Cause if, if Mazda doesn't feel comfortable, sharing their car right now it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable as well um so if you're just joining um mazda uploaded a video saying basically since there's a war going on people are suffering they don't feel comfortable unveiling a new vehicle so take it for what it's and it is a european release so i get it it's a little bit closer to home uh, for Mazda Europe. So I, I, I get it. I respect their decision. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, may God be with the people of Ukraine. Can I go back and see the release? Uh, let's see here. So this is, we'll just watch the video. How about that? Renault just unveiled their new SUV today, which is ridiculous because Renault's number one market outside of uh, France is Russia. So Renault doesn't have any problem re releasing a new vehicle. Um, how, how ironic, how ironic. <laughs> yeah, right. Sykes Pop says, wonder when they're going to release info because it's just going to get worse. I mean, at least we have, I mean, I'm, I'm going to 
since this is the only media that I have for the vehicle, I'm definitely going to use this in my, um, my videos, but, uh, yeah. Does that mean Renault are evil? I mean, all companies have one thing in mind and that's making money. So some companies, as, as you'll find out in the video that I talk about how the war is affecting car prices, some companies, uh, are choosing not to do any business or not have anything to do with Russia and, you know, bless them for that because I, I'm not in support of what Russia is doing. Um, so there you have it. There's the Mazda CX-60. We know what it looks like. Um, 300 plus horsepower from a plug-in hybrid. I don't actually, I actually don't know if the n 6 is going to be as powerful. And seeing the vehicle in motion here in slow motion, everything looks better in slow motion, but it does look better than the still images when it's actually moving. Um, i not a big fan of the design though, to be honest. Uh, I'm fingers crossed CX-70, CX-90 look a little bit more aggressive. This, in my, in my opinion, I don't think the front end looks as good as the old CX-5, especially they just refreshed the CX-5. Um, I think the CX-50 is the best looking crossover that they have. I think the CX-9 already looks really good as well. Um, interior is going to be amazing. Oh, by the way, um, we have a big digital MID behind here. So let's talk about what we do have. That's that's all I can do. Um, if you missed my other videos about Mazda, I don't like how they use shiny aluminum or a chrome inside their vehicles. Also on the front of this, this is like the sport front end. So you have a blacked out grill, blacked out grill surround with glossy black plastic. Seats look great with the Napa leather. Um, let's see what else we have. So this is a type of Japanese stitching here. I don't have, I don't remember the word for it. It's in the press release. I'm not going to look into the press release, but it's something that's commonly seen in Japan on this cloth uh, dash that looks amazing. Okay, so let's look at the, the new uh, HVAC controls here. I love that we have physical buttons still in Mazdas. No, no rotary dials, though, just uh, switches up and down. Heated steering wheel, heated ventilated seats. Here's your fan control. Uh, and we also have it from the opposite side as well. It looks like this is a shift by wire knob. Um, you can see park here on the left and then reverse, um, neutral and drive. So I'm not sure. It looks like shift by wire. I don't, I don't know if I can confirm that. So the rotary dial is still in place and it looks a little bit bigger. It looks definitely more premium than the, than the older shift. Uh, sorry, older, I was looking at the shift knob, the older rotary dials. We still have the volume knob on the other side of it. Um, let's check a look at the steering wheel. Also, I'm happy to announce to you guys that the touchscreen is a touchscreen and you can use it as a touchscreen uh, and use the rotary dial too. So that's something that's plagued Mazda. There's no need for just rotary dial lock-in. They should allow you to use rotary dial and touch. There, there are instances where I prefer to use rotary dial, there's instances where I prefer to use touchscreen and not having that choice in, in Mazda is, is frustrating at times. It's also frustrating in the Acura MDX Type S. If you haven't seen my first drive of that that I uh, uploaded this morning, go ahead and check that out. Hell of a car. But yeah, you're still locked into to using the True Touch interface, even though you can touch the screen in the Acura. Anyways, Mazda seems to uh, have, have listened to... Um, people saying that they want a touchscreen. So that's good. Uh, Lexus finally figured that out as we know. All right. Um, did I miss anything specifically from you guys? Oh, a German page has all the data. Ooh, maybe. Okay. Let's go to Mazda Germany media. Let's see here. If, if I can even find the site. Oh, maybe it's the YouTube page. I don't know. Pretty much everyone in the automotive Europe is not doing any further business with Russia. I, yeah, I don't think anyone should be doing business with Russia. Yep. But I don't want to get, I don't want to get too heated about what's going on in the world. So I'm going to try not to talk about them too much. Definitely watch my video. that will be coming out uh, within the next 24 hours talking about maybe the next 48 hours talking about how Russia 
it, the Russian war is affecting automobile prices and raw materials. CX-50 looks way better, 100% agree. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Just want to get back to like an image of the vehicle on the screen for you guys. Okay, so we have, this is, is this the black interior, which I don't think we've seen. This must be, maybe he's driving the sport model with the blacked out mirror. Uh, the material of the dash is also different on this. This looks like to be like a, a leather material instead of the cloth that we had. Let me see if I can find that cloth interior again. Yeah, so it looks, looks to be, this might be for the high, high end trims this kind of stitched together cloth material. And the, the, the materials kind of remind me, you know the sand gardens? I don't know what the proper word for it is in J J Japan, Japanese or what they actually call them in Japan. The little raked sand gardens or rock gardens that they have, that's what this material kind of reminds me of. Uh, here's a good look at the door panel. <sighs> Again, we have the vent, which could be in the door. It looks like it's on the edge of the dash though, which looks like it would be a knee banger. Because this look, this cutout here looks like it's so that the door can hinge off of this portion. It's just a ton of brushed aluminum or shiny plastic or chrome, whatever you want to call it. I'm not that excited about <laughs> about the shininess of it. Um, all right, I'll try to get back into the comments now. Um, Mazda Australia is doing reveal in four hours, as far as you know. Okay, that's exciting. Do we know whether or not the CX-60 introduces the inline six? It absolutely does. So you get two inline sixes, you have a diesel 3.3 liter, and you also have a Skyactiv X inline six. Um, now they're both mild hybrids. Uh, the plug-in hybrid is a four cylinder while you have uh, 48 volt mild hybrids uh, on the six cylinders. We don't have power numbers for the six cylinders yet or torque numbers. Um, the Germany page has as much information as the Mazda UK page. If, if you guys can post a link to the Mazda Germany page, that would be helpful uh, because I just don't, I wasn't able to find it on Google search. Um, here we go. Okay, so let's click this. Let's read through this press release a bit. Production of the Mazda CX-50. Oh, wait, wait, no, that's, that's CX-50. I got excited. <laughs> oh, it's not... That's the, that's the UK. UK is the UK media page is talking about the CX fifty, which is not available in the UK. They trolled me hard on that one. Okay, here we go. Fifty seven to fifty eight thousand US dollars for the Japanese inspired Takumi equipment line. Uh, it's based on the exclusive line. Yeah, I, I yeah, that's. I wish I could see where you guys are getting this information, but uh, since Mazda has has not given us, let's see here, let's see what else I have, at least when it comes to Mazda bookmarks. Anything here? Nope. Nothing on the mainstream media when I do Google search for CX-60. Uh, nothing on press releases here, so. But I'm probably going to end the stream a little bit early. I have a couple hundred of you guys still in here right now. Um, it's unfortunate that we didn't get the the full release today. But definitely stay tuned. I'll give you guys a full video once Mazda has released all the details officially. That could be in the next day or two. Could be a month from now. It's really hard to say. Um, but it is going to be an excellent experience on the interior. It reminds me a lot of Volvo with the, their use of um, upholstery on, like on the dash and stuff. Uh, this material right here looks pretty cool but not a big fan of all the chrome in there. Uh, steering wheels should be an all new steering wheel as well. Can I get an image of it? There we go. Yeah, this this looks a lot higher quality steering, here, steering wheel here with all the different uh, piecings of leather stitched together.
overall design though is very very similar to what we see on other Mazdas. Then you you have the 12 inch. I think it's a 12 inch. Could be bigger uh, MID behind the steering wheel. No longer do we have the physical needles in there. <clears throat> I would just go to Mazda UK. I should have said that the Mazda UK page has as much as the Mazda Germany page. Mazda UK. Oh, there it is. They, they, they release. So if you go to Mazda UK to their press, their media page, they don't have anything about the vehicle. But if you go to their normal page, Mazda.co.uk, they have the information here. So it's just kind of a, probably a last second uh, pull pullback of them deciding not to do the reveal because it looks like it's uh, it's out and about on, on multiple, multiple Mazda official pages. So um, let's, let's talk about maybe some things that I haven't talked about yet. Um, I already mentioned 327 horsepower you can go 124 miles per hour uh, in hybrid mode. Yeah, not in full electric mode. So it looks like it's going to cap out at 124 mpg. Looks like 39 miles in electric mode, but it's going to be less when it comes to America. And also the CX-70 is going to be slightly bigger. I'm also not a big fan of the fake exhaust tips. They could have just had a smoothed out bottom part of the bumper and no one would have cared. But when you put on fake exhaust tips, it just absolutely kills it for me. I also don't need this side vent here, which I don't believe is functional on the vehicle. Uh, so I'm fingers crossed that when I see it in person, I like it a little bit more, especially with the long hood. Um, and fingers crossed that the CX-70 design is different. A little bit more rugged. A little, I, don't, I don't need rugged, but a little bit more aggressive looking. This is a very soft looking uh, front end compared to what Mazda has been putting out on the market. Uh, the interior looks like a home run, in my opinion. I do like the rear tail lights. They look a little Infinity esque to me. Um, we have blacked out window surround here on the Sport model, and blacked out exhaust tip, fake fake exhaust tips here on the Sport model. Just get rid of it, Mazda. It doesn't need to be on there. And that's the issue I also have with the CX6, uh, the the QX60 from Infinity with the fake exhaust tips. Just dumb. <laughs> like they they could have even saved money, guys. Let's say let's say these plastic pieces cost three dollars to manufacture. They could have saved a little bit of money just having a smooth bottom of the bumper if it's fake. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but obviously know now that I get triggered by face fake exhaust decorations. Uh yes, yeah, speaking of fake exhaust decorations, I'm getting a X an XSE. Uh, Corolla hatchback six-speed manual and I know that has face fake exhaust decorations which I'm gonna roast on, on it for that but I'm excited to drive it um, I've driven the apex manual transmission Corolla but I actually haven't driven the XXE hatch hot, hot hatch uh, we, we have to wait for the GR Corolla for a real hot hatch but um, yeah what do you guys think of the design here I'm going to create a poll I got a I got a few of you guys in here as it is uh, let's see if I can create a poll. Okay, where's my stream? Here we go. It's on the bottom of the chat. There it is. There it is. That's why I couldn't see it. Okay, I'm going to create a poll. Now that we know what the... Okay, I don't need to say that. What looks better? CX60 or CX50? 50 x 60 x 50 and I'm gonna ask the community what do you guys think think what you think looks better um, I'm gonna pull up an image of the CX 50 real quick which we really don't have that many great images of and then I'm also gonna pull up an image of the CX 60 and you guys tell me, which one do you think looks better?
<laughs> you should be able to vote. Uh, 72% so far has said CX50. So make sure you guys are uh, <clears throat> are checking out the poll. I got 41 votes. CX50 people are saying looks better. Uh, the interior of the CX60 looks amazing. I agree with you, Dan. What is the range in electric mode? It's going to depend, but it says 39 miles. But also, um, the um, that's probably on WLTP. So here in America, it's going to be a little bit different. Probably less, like 35 to 32 to 35 miles would be my guess. Yes, there is no cladding on the CX60, but I want to look at the sport model because I know there's different body cladding with it. Uh, so we do still have paint matched fender covers or fender covers. I don't even, this word always escapes me. Um, wheel, wheel. I don't even know. Guys, what is this piece called? <laughs> Looks like the CX60, you want to step back. The CX60 is very ordinary looking. I agree. No one, no one, it's, and I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't know how I feel about this chrome piece that covers just the top end and kind of hooks around like a katana on the back. I, I don't know what to think about that. It looks, it looks strange. It looks unfinished. <clears throat> um, it does say PHEV inside this little fender decal ornament. The hood looks very long as it should, since it's uh, longitudinally mounted. 68% of you think the CX-50 looks better, and the CX-50 is going to cost significantly less, in theory. Fender flares, is that what the fender flares? Thanks, guys, for helping me out with that. Uh, but they, they, they don't really flare out, so that's why I struggle, I think... That's why I struggle calling fender fender flares, but I guess I guess it is it is fitting. Wheel wheel well arches wheel arches yes wheel arch covers, that's probably the most accurate name for them. Japanese Buick but rear wheel drive. No, don't 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 call Mazda a Buick. That's that's an insult for sure. <laughs> Thanks for reading your comment before you racing it. Uh. I didn't, I didn't erase it, so I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, does it look a little Audi-ish? I don't know what it looks like. To me, it almost looks a little Korean. Not like Genesis, but I don't even know. I don't know. It's not my favorite looking design for Mazda. And in fact, I... Oh man, I love the detail on this dash. And we finally have a touchscreen up here. Finally, thank God, Mazda, you listen. Um, but yeah, Mazda's designs typically, I mean, from this angle, it doesn't look bad. But it's probably cover, covering up the chintzy fender ornamentation, which nine times out of ten looks bad on whatever vehicle it's put on. The hood looks good. I think the grill looks good. The lights look soft to me. Um, from the rear end, I think it looks pretty good until you notice the fake exhaust tips. Yes, Mazda finally brought a touchscreen in. Yeah, it's great. I'm assuming it's great because the, the software was fine. They just needed more ways to interact with it. What would its market competitors be? UK site has pricing. Okay, well, let's talk about pricing here. Um, it's not going to be accurate to US dollars. So just converting it to US dollars is not that simple because you also have different taxing and different um, registration fees and stuff like that depending on the country you're in. So I would have to create a spreadsheet and type in some algorithms in order to get somewhat accurate pricing based off of other models that we both have in the UK and the United States. So um, unless you guys are in the UK, <clears throat> um, the pricing is not going to be accurate. All right, let's see here. Why rear wheel drive? But it's not rear wheel drive. It's all wheel drive. Anyways, 
It's funny that they um they put that. What will the powertrain be like? It's first plug-in hybrid. So it looks like UK might not even get the inline six. So certain parts of Europe may get the inline six. It's hard to say. Um, Japan will definitely get the diesel. America might be, and, and Australia might be some of the few markets that get the inline six Sky Active X engine. Yeah, exhaust pipes, right. Right, like <clears throat> the rear, looking at, okay, let me pull up. Let me pull up, uh, hold on. Let me pull up some Mazda B-roll here. Like even looking at the CX-3, look, CX-3, those are some decent tailpipes. Let me, let me pull up, let me pull up the image here, the fake tailpipes. Here we go. All right. Mazda 3 discontinued here in America. Good tailpipes. All right. Let's look at uh, CX-50. CX-50 here. Some good tailpipes. What'd you know? You don't need to reinvent the wheel here, guys. Good tailpipes, okay? I know it's using different engines, but if you can't modify the exhaust setup to account for a nice, good-looking exhaust, don't try to fake one. You can spot it from a mile away. All right, let's look at it. Um, <clears throat> oh, Mazda 6. Oh, yeah, Mazda 6 has a good back end. But I actually don't have any images of the Mazda 6 back end for some reason. All right. <laughs> Mazda MX-30. Okay, so just do something like this, Mazda. It's not hard. Just have a smooth bottom to the to the vehicle if if you're taking the more, you know, eco-friendly approach here with a plug-in hybrid. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. No one's gonna complain about this this you know, unfinished rear bumper, this black cladded or matte black plastic, right? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's look at the um, CX-9. Do I have an image of the CX-9 rear end? No. Yes, I do. All right. It's not, nothing wrong with those pipes. Anyways, you guys know I can I can get off 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 the deep end there. I already have. Uh, even the CX-50 has a good tailpipe. You got it. Okay, uh, if you just got here, let's catch you up to speed. Plug-in hybrid is the only thing that's really being talked about right now. Two and a half liter Skyactiv-G with a hundred uh, kilowatt, hundred kilowatt motor, uh, electric motor, eight-speed dual clutch, three hundred twenty-three horsepower uh, total with that hundred kilowatt motor, and three hundred sixty-eight pound-feet of torque. Can tow fifty-five hundred pounds. We're getting an, roughly an eighteen kilowatt hour battery. Your range will be anywhere from 32 to 39 miles of electric range, depending on the market you're in. The fake side vent is the worst. I don't know what's worse, the fake side vent or the fake rear exhaust. Yeah. Why Why a quad fake exhaust tips if it's an inline four plug-in hybrid? Yeah. If you're saying plug-in hybrid on the fake uh, fender vent, then why do you need... I don't know, guys. There's just no logic to it. You have the price in France, yeah. I mean, that's that's great. Those prices aren't going to convert from from euros or pounds or francs or what. I don't even know what your currencies are. They're not going to directly translate just from doing a currency uh, uh, translator. It has to be through. I'd have to compare it through all the different regulations and. and taxes and things like that strip everything out uh, and compare it against other models so why is Mazda doing this they're taking a, a Buick route with a fake vent stuff yes that's a bit of a Buick move when it comes to the fake uh the fakeness of this thing here yeah I'm really hoping I'm really hoping for Mazda's sake Gosh, there it is. That when the CX-70 comes to America, that we don't have these fake claddings on it. But I'm going to keep my expectations low, as you should with Japanese automakers. And it's probably safe to say that this overall design language is probably come to the CX-70, 80, and 90. For the most expensive Mazda in the lineup, it is not the best looking Mazda on the outside, and that's unfortunate. 
on the inside, it's a different ball game. From the looks of it, it looks like they've absolutely nailed the interior design and the materials. Um, other than the huge amount of chrome on the door, <laughs> the door trim. I can't find that image, but it's out there. <laughs> All right, so far on the poll, after 153 votes, 61% say the CX-50 looks better. Subaru is a worse offender with keeping lowest expectations. Oh, that that's true. That's true. Well, I mean, yeah, Japanese automaker. That's all you have to say. Um, so according to me, I would say the CX-50 is better than the CX-5 and the CX-50. From the looks and the design, yeah, I, 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 at least the exterior design, the CX-50 is gorgeous, in my opinion, for a crossover. Cyril Thomas interior is awesome. Great work, right? Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Roger Condiff, Kirk, thanks for the live stream. No, thank you for coming out. Um, I was I woke up this morning. I didn't plan on live streaming. And then I saw on their YouTube website that the 5 p.m. reveal was coming. So I'm like, oh, shoot, let's do a, a live stream. I can talk about the information I have about the vehicle with this massive press release here, uh, which is just huge. Um, and talks, it's literally like, it would take me probably three to four hours to read all this. I'm not a fast reader, but so, um, yeah. <laughs> let's see here. If I refresh the UK media page for Mazda. Oh, here we go. It's finally up. <clears throat> oh yeah, like yeah. Oh man, here's here here it is up up close and personal. Guys, Mazda, your designs are so good. What happened? This is not okay. This looks so cheap. This looks so cheap. It doesn't need to be there. This badge doesn't look bad. I'm okay with that badge. Okay, all right, new poll. Most of you think the CX-50 <laughs> looks better. New poll, new poll. Let me create this poll, okay. Are you okay with fake uh, side vents and exhaust on this new upscale CX-60. Okay, pull, pull, pulls out. Are you okay with fake side vents and exhaust on this new upscale CX-60? Side report, I, I I think the proportions here look pretty good, to be honest. It's from like this angle, the proportions of the hood just look a little bit off. It looks a little bit clown shoey. Rear angle looks okay. Still got that weird clown shoe vibe for me. The side profile looks okay to me. I'm not getting any weird vibes. And maybe I gotta see it in person or see it in motion to to really get an idea of the of the exterior design of this. The front end, the front end doesn't look great. And okay, let's let's look at the front of the CX-50. Okay, um, which is the the next most recently announced vehicle. Look at this. Look at the CX-60 compared to the CX, CX-50 here. I'm, I just, I just can't think in any situation where this one looks better. It's cool that we have daytime running lights kind of going into the grill, but it's not, it's not necessary by any means. Now, of course, we're looking at more of a sport package here 
compared to the the Chrome package or the the, the elegant pre premium packages. The fakery has got to go. So Mazda, Mazda, <laughs> some just twenty two percent of the people in the chat are okay with your fake side vents and exhausts or exhaust enclosures. It's not even a closure, exhaust ornamentation. It's a fake exhaust ornamentation. Can't even, imitation exhaust? <laughs> oh my gosh, imitation exhaust. 78% say they're not okay with, with those design choices. Yeah, CX-50 by a mile and it's a cheaper vehicle. CX-50 should sell like, like hotcakes here in America. Okay, okay, so difference maker. Yes, the CX-60 is not coming to America, but it's on the same platform and should take the same styling and design ideas from the CX-60 to be applied in CX-70, CX-90. I hope, I hope the CX-70 and CX-90 look more like the CX-50 for the American market. I think that's just a better direction. And maybe I'm not European enough to find the beauty and fake fake side vents and fake exhaust tips and a softer front end. This this front end just doesn't look that attractive to me. Remove the front badge and it's a Subaru. Oh, maybe over here. Yeah. Well, they're going after the Subaru market on this guy. I know you can't, okay, so Dan says, um, I know prices aren't directly comparable, but just rough math is 66K for the CX-60, yeah. I'm gonna say the CX-70 will probably start at like f around 50K here. The CX-90 probably around 60K. CX-60 or Lexus NX. Oh my gosh. There's no comparison. Hopefully the CX-70 doesn't look like this. All right. So let me go back to the CX, CX-60 CX here. <clears throat> we have sim similar battery packs when you compare the NX 450H Plus to this. Uh, we also have similar power numbers around 300. This is going to be faster and it's going to have a better driving experience. There's no doubt about it. This will be a more fun car to drive than the Lexus NX, but the NX definitely looks better. Uh, so let's go to Lexus NX. No, this will also be bigger than the NX. This is more of a Lexus RX competitor. So I don't know why I'm going too far off the deep end with the NX, but we don't have the new redesigned uh, plug-in hybrid RX yet. Um, and that will... They're, they're, unless Lexus pulls a Mazda, the new RX will look better than the CX-60. Anyways, let's go back to the NX. The NX is more of a CX-50 competitor. Well, or at least Mazda would like to think so. Um, all right. Here is the NX for you guys. Oops, I totally messed that up. I totally messed that up. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on, UK page. All right. All right, here we go. There's a there's an NX in comparison. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. Will Mazdas have will Mazdas have massaging seats? I did not see a massaging seat button. Massaging seat button. <laughs> Mazda massaging seats like a tongue twister. You just heard that. Um, it could be through the menus, and I could check uh, my table of contents here. I don't believe it will have massaging seats. So take that for what it's worth. That's not a deal breaker for me by any means. Where's my Mazda page? Here it is, okay. Well, let's go back so you guys compare the NX. Again, CX-60 
CX60 is noticeably bigger, so it's hard. To, this is this, this is more of a comparison between the RX and the CX60. So. <laughs> oh gosh, Thomas. Brutal. Thomas says he would rather walk the rest of his life than be caught inside the Buick looking CX60. Yes, the CX Sport Package grill does look different. There's an idea of what it looks like. Let's see if I can find a better image of it. The the sport package does look better. Oh my gosh, this interior. I love it. I love it. Okay, I could stare at it for a while. Definitely, it definitely looks like a shift by wire shifting knob. And there's that chrome on the on the door, or brushed aluminum or polished aluminum has no place. Has no, you don't need it. Just keep this wood. Keep the wood there. You don't need this this plastic, or just fill it with carpet. I would rather have carpet than this huge shiny piece of plastic. This, to me, on the interior is the same thing as the side vents and fake exhaust on the exterior. Oh, okay. It looks good in black, though. And look, okay, so in this black trim, we have, this is the sport model. That shiny chrome piece on the door looks like it's doled out, maybe matte or maybe even black matte. And then we have these um, vents and design cues that have copper coloring to them. So this looks this looks spot on. Now I do I do like the light interior here, but if I can only get it with this shiny piece of plastic, I might not I might not recommend that route. Again, more polished aluminum here on the center console. Do we have that on the sport model? Let's see. Sorry if I'm making you guys sick with all my scrolling, but the front end of the sport model looks a lot better. It still doesn't look as good as the CX50. Right. And the side vent is blacked out, which looks better. So if you have to have the side vent, black it out. Give it the least amount of attention as possible. There's the, the panoramic roof on there. Love this material. The stitching is so cool. Looks good. Looks clean. Looks really, really clean with this black interior. I typically don't like black interiors, but Mazda seems to have nailed it here on the CX-60. Gosh, it just doesn't need this piece. It it doesn't look right. I could live with fake exhaust, but this one is, is hard, harder and harder for me to live with is this Buick plastic side piece here. It looks better on the sport model though. So that's that's I guess the consolation prize. The front end also looks better on the sport model. So yikes. Oh, all right, guys. <laughs> uh I need to read some comments and then I probably need to peace out and finish finish this video. BVs are transitional technology for hydrogen, ice, and fuel cell. That's a possibility. It's hard to tell the future. Okay, I want to show the the CX50. There we go. There's the hero pose. I'll leave this up for you guys so you can look at it while I answer some of your questions. Um, most of you are not okay. 67% uh, of you are not okay with the fake side vents and exhausts on the upscale CX60 after 140 votes. The scales on the side look AutoZone aftermarket and on the fake exhaust to total notes. Totally agree. <laughs> it takes away the premium look. What the F is that shiny plastic on the inside inside? Yeah. Okay. It looks there it is on the door. Where's that close up on the door? Here it is. And and then you have like these these stripes and striations on it too. And you can just see, guys, you can see how damn reflective this is. That's a some people okay, so here's the thing. I have an issue with the CX-9. Love the car. It's a little bit cramped for my family, but I understand that no car is perfect. 
On the interior design of the CX-9, it has cr what I call chrome. Some people call it like glossy aluminum or brushed aluminum. I don't know what you want to call it. Anyways, it's reflective, silver-looking plastic. And it, blinds, it blinded me driving to Miami for two hours. And ever since then, I have a vendetta against anything that's really high reflective uh, on the interior. And this, look at the mirror finish here reflecting the dash. You can see the dash material here being reflected. If the sun catches that straight into your eye, have fun. So even though this interior for the most part looks excellent, and I love the stitching and this cloth on the dash and on the doors, the black interior, just for the sake of my safety and not having my eyeballs burned out, I'd be going with this one. And it looks better too, at least at least on the door it looks better. CX-50 and CX-60 interior. Okay, okay, all right. You're getting me excited. Let me go to CX-50 uh, interior real quick. Oh yeah, check this out. Heck yeah. Doesn't look quite as high of materials. Let's see if I can minim minimize this a bit. There we go. Not quite as high of materials on the CX-50. We don't have, I mean, but the seat design is so similar with the stripe in the middle. So you know they're kind of designed around the same time. We have a traditional gear shift here. Go figure. It's a, you know, it's it's a traditional Mazda. This is being an all new beast here um, with the shift by wire, eight speed dual clutch, etc. cetera. Uh, steering wheel. This is a higher quality steering wheel, but this one looks pretty damn good. We have a fully digital uh, MID behind the steering wheel. And over here, it looks like they're keeping the same sort of layout. This will be more customizable, but this is fully digital. But here we have a physical tax uh, and physical needles, I should say. Um, vertical vents surrounding the steering wheel on the CX-50 and vertical vents on the, on the edge of the dash, just like, whoops. Shoot, just like the CX-60. We have a nice leather stitching across the dash here. Not quite as ornate and unique as the stitching we see here on the top level CX-60 though. Um, rotary dial volume knob is in the same place. Um, this is taken straight out of like a Mazda 3 or a CX-30. It's not a bad thing. Um, this is definitely a larger HVAC control unit. And sorry guys, I. I'm just at the the page here, so it's hard hard for me to pull up all the comparison images of the interior with the close ups and stuff. So I thought I had an image of the close up of the HVAC, but maybe I don't. Oh, I did. I think it was in the video. That's where I saw it. Okay, get back to the interior. I mean, it, it doesn't, from, from the commoner's eye and even my eye, there doesn't look to be that much of a quality difference between the top of the line. This is the Meridian, I think, the Meridian CX-50, and then the CX-60 Sport package over here. Doesn't look to be that much different in quality materials. All right, let's get back to the chat. Yeah, it was in the video. Yeah, where they had the sh the close up of of the HVAC controls. Six fifty has damn piano black. I'm. It does. Oh, like right here. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Not nearly as much as reflective silver trim. Yeah, there's not that much piano piano black in here. It's just around the shifter. That doesn't bother me. Would you make a trip to test one release? No, because I'll just wait for the CX seventy. Um, I won't be I won't be driving. Okay, or maybe you're act, are you actually asking about the CX fifty? The CX fifty media drive I was signed up for, um, but due to travel restrictions, I'm not going. Simple as that. There will be other, my, I'll have friends there going. I'll have uh, a lot of acquaintances and colleagues going, but I will not be attending the CX fifty event. 
uh, media event. But I will update you guys. We'll have media for you. Um, I'll probably have, well, I already went over pricing and packaging. But uh, if there's embargoed materials, Mazda said they would share it with me. CX-60 has a panoramic roof? Yes, it does. Well, it's optional. Same thing on the CX-50. It has a panoramic roof as well. Okay, if you're, come, if you're new to the channel, powertrain real quick. The only powertrain that's been detailed is a 2.5 liter Skyactiv-G plug-in hybrid with a, a total of 323 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque made with an 8-speed dual clutch. A dual clutch... Gosh, do we have any? Okay, yeah. I was going to say, do we have any dual clutches on the Asian automakers? Or should I say the Japanese? Because we know the Koreans have it. Um, the ILX has a DCT, but it looks like they're scrapping the dual clutch for a CVT on the Integra. Anyways, don't get me fired up about that. Uh, we have 134 horsepower EV motor. Um, and you can drive about 35 miles or so, give or take, on the electric range only. Uh, Mark Coopers, I'm doing really well. I'm doing well. How are you? Um, Giannis, there's also an inline six Skyactiv X. These are just my guessing numbers. There's also a 3.3 liter Skyactiv diesel engine. Um, we don't have numbers on those quite yet, but they are a uh, VIN. I did get an invite. I can show you my emails with Mazda. I got an invite. I signed up for the event, but... I don't want to jump through hoops and sacrifice certain things in my life in order to go to a, a CX-50 event. Panda roofs add more complexity noise. Yeah, they also add more light, which is nice. It's an XL CX-5. If the Highlander sells, this will sell. The Highlander stylistically underwhelming. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a big crossover. So crossovers are selling well at the moment. So Mazda's got a shot of selling it well, selling well. But no one's going to be probably as hard on the vehicle as I have and as you guys have been with, with the uh, plastic side vents and the fake exhaust and the shiny reflective interior. For, for normal people, the interior is the same as a CX-50, and that's not good. Well, it's very good for the CX-50. That means the CX-50 is getting a very upscale and premium interior that competes well with its more expensive upscale brethren. But I will end it. No turbos on the inline six. No, there are no turbos on the inline six as far as we know. There could be variants of it coming, but the only variant of the inline six gasoline that we know is a Skyactive X, which will have a lean supercharger um, and it'll have a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Does a 48 volt help with horsepower? It does. How much? I don't know. Very, very small amount. It, it's mainly there to help with start and stop. <clears throat> with the engine and uh, uh, acceleration at, like from a stop. Hopefully the new 6 will get the PHEV set up. It would be nice to have this sort of set up in a sedan and be baller. Hopeful aim, uh, auto get fuel. I probably butchered that. Um, but I know what channel you're talking about. They have good stuff. They have a CX-60 walk around. You can see everything tested. Cool. I'll have to check that out. I don't want to watch their video on my channel and get copyright infringed. So uh, doesn't the Skyactiv-X require a supercharger to get more air in? That's my understanding of it. Uh, brushed aluminum is okay. I, you think it's subjective. It is It is subjective, totally. Some people can deal with the, the reflective nature of it. To me, after getting blinded by it in the CX-9, I never want to see it in the interior ever again. Um, normal Integra models are not sporty, so CVT is okay, Kirk. 
Ah. It's not okay with me. <laughs> it's not okay with me. Um Yeah. I just just go save your money and get a civic at that point. Um Accurate's Accurate's about precision precision crafted and precision. Oh, I can't even talk. Precision crafted performance? Precision. Oh my gosh, I can't even think. I've been talking too long. Yeah, precision crafted performance. Yes, I was right. <laughs> I've been talking too long. Anyways, nothing says performance or precision crafted like a CVT, right? Like they they're going to get endless flack for it. <clears throat> If you don't hear me talking about it, you'll hear everyone else. So I know I know I know the base Integra is not really an enthusiast car. I get it, but CVT has no business being in a premium or luxury brand. Uh I call out Lexus every time I can for the CT two hundred H. That car's garbage. Anyways, you guys have got me all fired up today. <laughs> Is that a full digital display? Yes, behind the steering wheel is a full digital display. Over on the right is the CX-50, over on the left is the CX-60. Um, it looks like a midship engine, has less overhangs than any other Mazda, not in love with the front, but the side profile is great. I do like the side profile of the CX-60. I think it's its best angle. Um, it does Yeah, this is kind of the side profile, a little bit from the rear quarter. Uh, rear quarter looks okay. The front end, not sold on, but from the side and from the back, it looks okay as long as you don't see the fake fake vents and fake fake exhaust. <laughs> uh, I need to stop talking about that, though. CX-50 is an excellent product, but I can't find its place. Is it, off, is it off-road focus or just a package? Okay, the CX-50 has, um, it is a little bit more focused towards off-roading. But they'll have the Meridian package, which is kind of like the wilderness package for uh, Subaru. So it is it is a more sporty, more rugged version of the CX-5. Does it mean it's better at off-roading? Highly doubt it. It's probably whoever's a better driver in that <laughs> instance. But yeah. The black interior is fire. High five. I totally agree with you, JJ. Um, this interior I like, just not the uh, the shiny bits in it, uh, but the black interior, if I can find it, is really, really good. I can't seem to find it now. There it is. Black interior looks great on this Mazda. All right, guys, I'm going to start packing it up. Thank you for coming out. Um, it was unexpected with the announcement today saying that they're not going to publicly announce the vehicle, even though they're... Um, satellite media websites have um, auto uh, auto gefuel as well as other publications. <clears throat> I've already got hands on with the vehicle, so I mean it's a touchy subject. What's going on in Europe right now? Um, if Mazda doing what they need to do to feel like to, to respect the situation, respect the people of Ukraine. So I get it, um, but the information's out there. I went over most of it. I do have this huge press release that's been shared to me um, that goes over so much of the vehicle um, from head to toe, but it looks like Mazda is not quite ready to share this level of information quite yet. Um, we do have Bose sound system, by the way, in the top top trims, or just optional, I should say. But powertrain's pretty exciting. Plug-in hybrid, over 320 horse, uh, over 35 miles of plug-in range. Um, inline six Skyactiv X confirmed as well as the 3.3 liter Skyactiv uh, diesel. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Sorry if guys, I know you don't see like in my normal videos, my no normal reviews or press release, you don't see me get fired up very much or, or moody. Um, but, but on live streams, <laughs> I feel like my filter is gone. And it, it's probably because I'm interacting with you guys. I just feel like I'm hanging out with a bunch of people at the pub. Uh, and we're, we're sharing thoughts and ideas, arguing over points, which I love. I love discussing these these things with you guys and, and getting your idea about the car. So if I seem a little bit different than normal, it's because it, live streams, I behave a little bit different interacting with you guys. It's just a lot of fun. You guys know how to get my goat too, or should I say, 
<laughs> the auto manufacturers specifically know how to get me riled up. But anyways, thank you so much for coming out. If you enjoyed it, uh, I don't know, smash the like button. If you're not subscribed, that would help me out a lot. I'd love to get to 150,000 subscribers. Uh, stay tuned for, no for more Mazda news. Like I said, CX-50 Media Drive will be at the end of the month. Not going, but I will give you guys embargoed information. Um, if Mazda has embargoed information by then, it might just be driving impressions that are embargoed. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll update you guys along the way, whether it's a CX-50, 60, 70, 80, 90, uh, if they ever bring a new RX-7 out, Mazda 6, MX-5, you know the MX-5 has a, a whole room inside of my heart. So <laughs> anyways, thank you so much for coming out. Had a lot of fun. I want to live stream more. Uh, when I hit 150K, I'll do a live stream. Hold on. I've been waiting for a live stream to put this puzzle together. It is um, an 8x10 puzzle born from Invincible of all the Toyota pickups and Land Cruisers in its lineage. Um, so I've been waiting to, for a live stream to, to put this together. So 150K, I'll do that, uh, which should be this month. And thank you guys so much for your support. Had a fun time. Um, it's, always, it's always a blast, but I got to cut myself off and... Uh, be a dad. So, all right. Check in the next video. Thank you for coming out, guys. I'll see you in the next one.